So, good morning, everyone. I hope you had a nice dinner yesterday. So, my name is Jonet. I come from the University of Glasgow, from the UK. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the Band of Electronics and Sensing Technologies Group. And I'll be speaking to you today on how the encapsulation improves the performance of our fabricated temperature sensor. All right. So just a brief introduction on flexible electronics. So we have seen a lot of interest and a lot of investment made on flexible electronics during the past year. Um, and uh, we have also seen a lot of examples during the past days in here how these types of electronics can be applied. This is also because the conventional technologies cannot meet the demand of conformability that we require for all the emerging applications, such as health monitoring, human machine interaction, or um, smart packaging, and so on. But there are still a lot of challenges that, um, that we still need um, to, to approach to make these technologies really reliable. The first solution I'll go through is repeatability and logical fabrication. So we are using uh, different materials that require that require new fabrication techniques. But uh, to commercialize um, these these so these devices, we do need uh, high throughput, and we just not need high throughput with these new technologies, uh, fabrication methods. We also need repeatability from batch to batch. We don't want all our devices having different characteristics. The second one is stability under bending because um, all these electronics will be experienced, will be out in the world actually experiencing a lot of uh, torsion and uh, bendable and, and uh, mechanical deformations. So we need our devices to really keep uh, the electrical performance during these, um, during these deformations. The service is, is one really, really important point because during, during the entire lifetime of the device, uh, we want to keep the recycling process, we want our um, device to come back to the initial state. And more important to this talk is the influence of the environment and the link of the device. So I'm talking about how the environment can actually impact to our system. All right. So with this, Okay, so with this last point, I'll go to the uh, second motivation, which is encapsulation. So why do we need encapsulation? There's a lot of research and also made on this field. So I'm just gonna point out a couple of examples. So we need encapsulation, uh, especially to protect from humidity and oxygen, which we know that really degrades the performance of our devices if they're controlled. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so back again <laughs> against the humidity and uh, water vapors and oxygen that will degrade the electrical performance of our devices. Uh, mechanical damage, as they really endure a lot of damage from handling or from accidents. And you also have to consider in the capsule length the anticipation because the electronics really do it up and it up a lot. So we need to extract this heat from the electronics. In pretty flexible electronics, for example, can be the interface with the non-functional material because uh, a lot of times uh, the devices that we are making, the actual encapsulant is touching our functional material. So we have to use soft materials also to think about the interface between both as we don't want charge tra um, trapping of charges as well. And you also have to consider that plastic, plastic substrates do permeate. So water vapors and gas and um, oxygen can go through our flexible substrates and reach our functional layers, again, degrading um, the performance of our devices. So what to, with this model division, what am I going to show today is that um, we fabricated the, a temperature sensor and basically we encapsulated this temperature sensor and we're going to show you how this, um, how this uh, improved the, the performance of the, of the, the sensor. Our temperature sensor is using uh, uh, heat sensitive nanowires made of vanadium pentoxide. So first I will go through how we are uh, assembling the nanowires, then the fabrication, the encapsulation process, electrical characterization, and some conclusions. So why are we using uh, inorganic nanowires? First, nanowires have a large surface area, which then will give a lot of uh, an improve, uh, give greater sensitivity. Uh, it can be a solution processable, and the solution processable really allow us to scale up with um, the fabrication also. 
and uh, we have efficient charge transfer. But uh, working with nanowire is not that easy, so we need also to assemble them and we want to align them and place them in a certain locations that we know where they are, uh, because uh, we don't want to have nanowires everywhere and we want to align them to have uh, greater logical performance. So how are we doing this? Uh, first, uh, we have to, um, <coughs> Uh, so the technique to align the nanowires is uh, electric, electric field assembly, which is based on the electrophoresis, which is a well-known technique. And uh, so we need to, the first step is basically having our glass carrier, where we fabricate our, uh, the, the electrophoretic uh, uh, electrodes. So there's a very small gap in the middle where the electric field is actually be generated. Then we spin on PI on top, which is our flexible substrate. Secondly, we prepare the dispersion of the living petoxin nanowires in DA water, and we drop cast this dispersion on top of the, of the flexible substrates, which then in the end, we apply an AC signal between these two electrodes that generates an electric field. So I'm going to put a video here that kind of shows, uh, so you can see here, maybe the brightness is a bit difficult, but you can see here the nanowire. So now in the field, so when the field is applied, you can see the nanowire being. Um, Okay. So now the nanowire aligned, according to like the field lines, and all the nanowires are getting attracted towards this region where we have an high dense uh, electric field. So this is how we are assembling our uh, heat sensitive uh, material. Secondly, we do um, we fabricated the electrodes uh, with lithography using titanium and gold, and uh, then the encapsulation was used. <coughs> It was um, uh, made using the uh, electro hydrodynamic printing using the super inkjet printer. Uh, we are using nanosilic epoxy. Nanosilic epoxy has an encapsulant, which is a, an hybrid, uh, an hybrid uh, composite. So um, here I have one video showing more or less uh, how is it the printing done. So we are covering the channel region where we have our nanowires. And you can see here the actual printing of the um, of the encapsulants, which is basically covering everything uh, of the nanowires and this region. So last step, uh, to have um, our actually flexible substrate with our flexible devices, we peel off the, um, the spin on PI from our glass carrier. And this is basically the, the whole process of fabrication of our, the, of our devices. Summarizing the fabrication method, we have here an SM image of our aligned vanadium petoxide nanowires, and in here the, the nanowires bridging both the electrodes. Uh, you can see the encapsulation layer covering, covering the channel region, and three, three devices here with uh, the printed uh, encapsulation. And in the end, the function of flexible devices without the electrodes of electric fuel assembly in the back. So electrical characterization. So first we start just to, with an, a linear ID cup showing the only contact between the, the, the nanowires and our fabricated electrodes. Um, we made them, the, um, so here you can see in this graph, the response of, um, of our temperature sensor uh, according to the, the, the temperature that we are applying. So we use the Peltier system where we are going from five to 50 degrees with the five degree step. So you can clearly the, you can see here a clear step where our sensor is responding, and we are getting a minus one point five percent change per Celsius, which is a, a really high value also comparable to state of the art from our from our uh, nanowires. But one thing we can see in here is that the the, um, the actual sensor is not really re recovering to the initial position. So you are already observing an hysteresis happening. You can see from twenty five to twenty five, it's already lowering. And it's even more, uh, more clear in here when it, comes, when it goes down to five degrees and comes up to 10, we already have a big gap there of hysteresis happening. So we fix this by through the encapsulation. So we observe that by encapsulation, we fix this, we lower the bit, the, we kind of reduce the bit of sensitivity, we lost it, but we really fix the hysteresis problem in here. So you can see the, the, the steps of recovering there, really reaching the, 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 the states of where they were. A bit more clear in here in this graph, which is just like the, the cycle curves of the responses where we are comparing with the temperature now. So you can see that for encapsulated, we have a 0.98 linearity of our device. 
and that lower temperatures, uh, the non encapsulated device really has a lot more sensitivity, so you lose a lot of linearities, not just about the series that are there. Uh, in, the, um, in this uh, table, we have the, the values comparing. So, TCR, the sensitivity for non encapsulated was from minus 1.5 to minus 1.2, we reduced a bit, but in the, in the meantime, we uh, reduced a lot the hysteresis and also improved a lot the, the, the linearity of our device as well. Why is it happening this uh, raising sensitivity at lower um, at lower temperatures? So we are still finding out why is this why is this happening. One possible theory is that we have condensation of water at lower temperatures for not encapsulated. So this water is uh, being absorbed in our um, in the surface of our nanowires, and uh, they are dissociating and kind of creating an extra pad for hopping the, because the, the main conduction mechanism going through our vanadium pentoxide is too hot. So this is one possible explanation for this. Uh, now, other um, interesting result that we also saw is that um, a bit away from now the temperature sensing that the mechanical robustness of our of our device. So the last step, the substrate peel off can be quite aggressive on our sensing layers. And um, so basically because when we are curing the spin on polymides, Due to the difference of co the, the coefficients of thermal expansion, we have an, an embedded stress between the glass uh, and um, the polymide. So when we peel off the, this substrate, this stress will be released on the polymide and our electronic layer. And uh, one thing we saw is that for non-encapsulated, the nano resistance, initial resistance of the, the sensor was around one mega. And after debonding from the, the glass slide, it doubled to two megas. But with encapsulation, the nano resistance remained quite the same. Uh, this is just a graph showing the thickness of our printed layer, which is around uh, two microns. <coughs> so this is all. Basically, I've shown you today the solution process of assembly, assembly of its sensitive nanowires and the electrodynamic printing of the encapsulant. We saw that both encapsulated and not encapsulated showed uh, a nice sensitivity, and that the encapsulation really improves the linearity and reduces the stasis, as well as the mechanical robustness of the device. And uh, in the future, we are planning to integrate these, um, these devices for applications, just have them mapping and robotics. Uh, so this is the end. I would like to acknowledge all the fun that made this job, uh, this work possible. Uh, also, follow us in the, in the social media. And I would like to thank a lot for, for my group and with all the, all the help that uh, they provided me to make this, this work possible. So thanks a lot. I, I hope that you enjoyed. And if you have any questions, please. Thank you, Senator. It was very interesting. Thank you. So, the audience has any questions for you? Yes, please. Uh, hi. Uh, so, I have a question regarding the printing of the encapsulant. In the video, it, it looks almost like the encapsulant doesn't wet the nanowires super Does well. What? Does the encapsulant wet the nanowire as well? Because, according to in the video, it seems like Maybe I just said that the encapsulate, uh, the encapsulant essentially runs up to the side and doesn't cover the nanowires. Uh, no, in, in, in this, yes, but in the video. So I, wa I was wondering how homogeneous is the printed layer? So it's like here, it's, it's not covered nanowire. It is, no, but it is there. So yeah. if you see these regions, so these are the channels between. Yeah. Also, basically, just not wetting the the for the metal essentially, right? Well, because it's electron. It's not letting the electron. The electron. <laughs> no, no, no. So yes. Yeah, so we are not covering everything. So these are the pads that we are accessing. So I'm not really putting the capsule everywhere. I'm just really covering the the region where we have the nanowires. I don't know if this answers right. your question. So I'm just covering this region, which is actually the region that is making the the conduction or actually it's sensitive. So this is where we are printing our encapsulant. We could print over everything, but for this study, we just printed really over the channel region where the transport actually happens. I don't know if this answered your question. Yeah. So as you can see in here also, over in this region where the nanowires are. Yeah. Yes, on that question. Uh, am I listed, but do you have an idea of the thickness and surface roughness? Of the encapsulant? Yeah. Yeah, so it's here, yeah, I'm sure that. So you can print different layers, you can so it's around two microns the one i made there just to eat to just with one layer 
you can increase the thickness or put less thickness. So for less thickness, you could just increase the speed of the dynamic printing. And with more speed, uh, um, you will reduce this layer. But maybe one problem that I saw is that by increasing speed, you kind of not going to cover everything, or you're going to have gaps between. Or you can print to multiple layers on top to increase this thickness, depending on how you want to, on how you want to basically use an encapsulant. And one last question. Oh, uh, just a... uh, so her, the lady had a her hand raised. Would like to say her question? Yes. Oh. Uh, oh. Yes. Yes. Okay. I had a follow up. Uh, yeah. So in this in this plot here, uh, it looks like it's quite taller on one side than the other. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> you mentioned like it's not uniform. Yeah. 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 What, yes. What yes. Is the cause of that? This might be also when it starts, one thing that may be for me, it is more and more clear. When it starts, it kind of ejects more ink than like during the end. I don't know if this is clear maybe from the device. This is to go to optimization. Maybe you can do, you can kind of fix this issue. Also, one problem is that you have to do also plasma treatments to raise a bit of the wettability and make it easier for printing. So when during the start, it kind of prints, I also saw that during the start, it prints a bit more ink. And then to reduce a bit and stabilize also. But to, this is a great point and something that, that requires optimization as well. And also, one other thing is that we need uh, one of the thing of that consideration is that the layer that you are painting, because it's hydrodynamic, so it's electric field. So if you have a metal underneath, this will change that field that is going through the nozzle and the substrate. So this will also increase the field and maybe extra more ink towards the substrate. That would be one, that, one drawback of this technique here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neto. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.